Hello, my name is Nikki. Welcome to my channel. It's a channel where I talk about books and what I think about them. So if you're interested, please keep watching. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in March and the books that I would like to read in April. I have been very hesitant to do a TBR before because I feel a lot of pressure with it and I feel like, oh my god, if I don't get to all the books, then what's the point of doing a TBR? But I strategically made, first of all, a list of books that I think I could get to, second of all, a books that I am interested in reading in April. So let's get right into it. The first book that I read in March was A Quotar. I actually read this going into March, so I started it in February and I loved it. I have a whole vlog about it. I will link it in the cards. I love A Kotar. I love the series and I am planning to read another A Kotar book in the series, the next one this month, so stay tuned until the later half of this vlog to hear my thoughts. Overall, in case you don't know what it's about, which I would be very surprised, it's about a girl who lives in this magical land that is divided into the human realm and the fa fairy realm and she ends up being taken into the fairy realm because of things and she ends up staying in the fairy realm and the book ended on kind of a cliffhanger kind of wrapped up but i have already read the second book and i remember it being amazing and it is the favorite book of a lot of people here on booktube so i really want to read it and see if i still like it so i will be vlogging that later on. The next book I read in February was These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I have another vlog on this. I guess I vlogged a lot this month, but I really like this. I read this for a book club. This book is about Shanghai in the 1920s and it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. My final thoughts on this was that I gave it five stars because I loved the energy, the ambiance, the setting, all of that was amazing. However, I would say it's like 4.5 stars just because it's not a romance book and you can't put that it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling on the cover and then show me a book that's not a romance book. There was hardly any romance in the book but it had a lot of horror elements and it really delved into the socio-political status of Shanghai in the 1920s. This is really fast but I want to get into the books I want to read this month. Also I want to get into the books that I didn't vlog about so the book I read which I also included in this vlog was a lot so by Darcy Little Badger. That is a book about a I think like 15, 16 year old girl. She is living Apache and her cousin dies and he asks her to solve his murder and bring justice to his murder. The book takes place in this world where mythical creatures are real and not just Native American mythical creatures but also vampires, fairies, and the world and society is very much defined by the creatures that exist. In this world and the powers that people have and this particular main character Erlatsoe or Ellie as she's nicknamed she ends up being able to raise the dead. My one qualm with it and it was the reason why I rated it three stars was that one it was very predictable two it was a middle grade book the main character should have been 13 or 12 it sounded very infantile the tone was not very intense there were good points about the cultural aspects of being a Native American and the role that the United States plays in America and the exploitation of Native Americans, but this was not a YA book in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion. It is possible that you read it and you think otherwise, so if you have read it and you feel like it's a YA book, let me know down below. The next book I read, which I binged this, and it was a total accident, I ended up requesting the book. I should tell you what it is first. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. So I binged this book because I requested it from the library, the audiobook, and this was after Noelle Gallagher, another booktuber, mentioned this book in... I'm not really sure which video she mentioned it in, but I love this book. If you don't know what it's about, it's about these two women and their daughters. They are twin sisters, and they are white-passing twin sisters in the United States, and their life takes a divide where one sister just decides to live like a white woman, and the other one decides to live like a black woman and it shows how different their life has been and the decisions that they had to make and the struggles that they faced and honestly how tortured their life was due to this decision and also you see the lives of their daughters that one of them extremely extremely dark skin and the other one is blonde hair blue eyed and how they have such different life experiences and it was just very beautifully written. It honestly is one of my new favorite books. I am dying to get a copy of the book because I would reread it in a heartbeat because it was very poignant. Poignant? I, that's my the word of the day apparently. But 
it really delves deep into racial tensions here in America and the difference even in such short time because segregation in America ended in the 1960s when these two girls were born in a small town in Louisiana that only had people that were light-skinned in the town and it shows that whole change and how everything progresses but those racial undertones still exist so I really recommend it. I don't know if I gave it justice with what I said about it but pick it up if you are looking for an amazing book, contemporary fiction that truly pulls on your heartstrings and makes you cry like a baby because I cried so much and it wasn't even because the ending was sad. I just was so emotionally invested in these characters by the time that I ended the book that I could not help but cry when finishing the book even though it was a very happy ending for the characters that I liked so really recommend the next books I read after The Vanishing Half, I needed something a little bit less heavy after reading These Violent Delights, A Lot So Away, and The Vanishing Half. So I picked up Volume 1 and Volume 2 of Tokyo Ghoul. This has also been adapted into an anime. I actually watched the first season of the anime. I didn't like the second season. The production company ended up taking a change with the series that I personally didn't like. So I really wanted to finally read the books and see how the books ended because I heard that the ending of the books was a lot better. And I love these books. I think they're so creepy, so gory. And honestly, it brings a lot of questions on morality because if you don't know, Tokyo Ghoul is a world that... There are these people, hum they're not humans exactly, they're called ghouls, but they look exactly like humans and they eat other humans for sustenance and that's how they live. And it goes into the details of like, yes, there's bad ghouls, but there's also ghouls that are relatively innocent that are just trying to live in a world that doesn't accept them and also is hunting them down constantly so these people are living under constant surveillance because yeah they're eating people like they could eat me if I wasn't a ghoul so I already ordered the third volume I do think that for the next couple of things I don't think I'm gonna stay to this one like to this style they finally released monster editions which I have three volumes in one so I think I'm definitely just gonna get that next time but I love these books I really recommend if you're looking to get into anime or mangas and you're into horror and everything definitely pick this book up. The last book that I read this month, and I actually finished it super fast. I finished it in like three days with Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. This is a reread for me and I really wanted to reread it before the series came out because I read this in 2014 so I literally do not remember anything about this book. As you can see I liked it but I liked it a lot more in the first half than I did the second half. I didn't particularly like the ending nor do I ship Melina. I don't know if that's her ship name but I, I know that maybe we shouldn't read books for ships. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. I'm about to lose my shit. But I didn't ship it. You know, I don't like that whole trope. Well, I'm flipping a vlog on this with my thoughts on this. So I'm not going to get too heated up by this right now. So once that is up, I will link it either in here or down below but i'm just not the type of person that likes the best friend trope. The best friend that they like like each other forever and then or like they like like uh, this was a three star read for me, but it was like probably a five star read until half the way through the book. And I don't even want to say it's because I'm a Darkwing stan, even though they did him kind of dirty. I wanted to read it before the book came out. And this was the last book that I read in March, or at least the last book that I finished in March because I'm starting the second book right now, like this week. And it's still like March 28th or something, but I won't finish it until April. Let's get into my TBR. <laughs> so since we're in the Grishaverse, these are the first two books that I will be reading in April. These are chunky books. I have read Sage and Storm, I don't remember it, and I've never read Rude and Rising, so that will be a first for me. These will all be in the same blog for my Booktube Darlings series. However, I am looking forward to it. Uh, in case you don't know, these follow Alina after the events in the first book. I don't want to spoil it, so... I'm gonna just put like a little thing here when I start talking about spoilers about the first book where I talk where you're gonna see the cover of a book here okay so just look at it here and if you see this mute the video this follows Alina after she leaves Rafka she leaves Rafka and then this book is 
she obviously is coming back to Ravka because she still left the evil Darkling in Ravka causing fury and evil so she has to go back and fight him. I don't like reading the blurb in the back because usually it will spoil what happens in this book if I don't know. So I'm gonna be reading these two books. I'll let you know how I like them. I'll link the vlog down below once I finish it. I'll probably finish them fast because I read the last one really fast so hopefully these are good too so that I read them fast. And that reminds me, I really want to read Six of Crows. I did not know that they were going to tie in Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone in the new Netflix series. So I do want to get an introduction to the characters before the series comes out. So I am looking forward to reading that. This is going to be a first for me and I'm super excited because everyone says this book is so much better than these ones. Like I mentioned before, I will be reading this in this month because I've wanted to catch up with the entire Akotar series so that I can read eventually this one, A Court of Silver Flames, which I heard was really good. And so this is gonna be the one I read this month. Not much to say about it. It follows Feyre after the events of the first where she's very tortured and now she has to spend one week a month in the night court and you know, shenanigans occur. Looking forward to this one as well. This is why I didn't wanna do a TBR because I feel like I'm just gonna say, yeah, I really wanna read this book. <laughs> And then the next book I want to read, and this is again for, not again, but another book club, same book club, but another book, Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is a dark academia book that basically is a King Arthur take on a YA urban fantasy. And I love urban fantasy. The cover looks really cool. It's been super hyped up. But again, I don't even like reading blurbs. I cannot write a TBR. So I'm just, I'm letting you know what I'm reading this month, basically. She's like magic. Okay, I'm not gonna keep going into this, but I'm looking forward to it. Everyone I've seen and everyone that I trust their opinion on booktube has really liked this book, so I think I would like it too. Continuing in really hyped up books on booktube, I am going to be rereading the Throne of Glass series, starting with the Assassin's Blade, Chandler Ansley. I hope I said her name right. If she ever sees this video and I didn't, I'm really sorry. She is doing a readathon because she wanted to reread this book and she announced it and apparently a lot of people did. And I was like, you know what? I've never read this book and I never finished the Throne of Glass series so it'll be funner to read it with people. She's doing a live show on the 11th so I am going to read this before then so that I can discuss and then probably if I have time, I'll get to Throne of Glass this month, but it'll probably be a May thing. And this is a novella I think just describes the origin story of Selena and i never read it so and i like selena at least i liked her when i read the throne of glass series i don't know if i'll like her still she's like a bit of like a ooh i'm not like other girls but we'll see each month i'm trying to read some graphic novels because i have tests and it's just easier to read graphic novels and i really wanted to get into the percy jackson series because i never read the spin-off series of like the apollo books and the kane chronicles and whatever i never read those series so i really wanted to read <sighs> I wanted to reread The Lightning Thief and the books and my brother ended up having the graphic novels so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna read the graphic novels. I'll read them faster, especially since I'm already familiar with the story because I read them a couple times as a child and I think it'll be fun and the illustrations look really cool. I'm going to be reading these three. I also thought it would be a good idea to read the graphic novels because it's like kind of like Harry Potter that when you start Harry Potter, it starts off very childish and as he gets older, the tone gets more mature. So that's why I thought about reading the first three. In graphic novels as well. The last book that I have is The Last Wish by Andres Sapowski. This is the first book in The Witcher Chronicles. I really like The Witcher and I honestly like I can't wait for the second season and it hasn't come out yet and from what I understand the first season was kind of like all of these stories amalgamated so I really want to read this and then finally go into The Witcher universe and it was a list of short stories. It's one of the books that I have for my 2021 challenge where I read the books I have overstock on my shelf. Looking forward to this. Okay, sorry if I was talking really fast. I am just really late to something so I really have to go. Bye. Please subscribe below if you're interested in watching this month my vlogs and my reading wrap-ups and my thoughts. I swear once I actually read the book, I have more to say. So bye.